Coach, we find ourselves at the foot of the Rockies, Denver, Colorado, for this edition of the NFL on EA Sports. The scene a few moments ago, here it is. It's unlike any other in sport as both teams made their way out of the tunnel. These folks are fired up as their guys are ready to do battle between the Chicago Bears and the Denver Broncos. And as we see so frequently here in Colorado, that one over the inline. So it'll come out to the 25. down Graves it's caught on the right side Williams a good start offensively 15 yards on the game's initial play and we see the emphasis early here get your star receiver involved able to do it successfully not a bad start to begin with that's for sure and to me this play says our guy is better than your guys because, you know, a player of his stature, he won't just be single covered all game long. It's going to involve multiple people. And right away, they told the other team, guess what? He's just better. Now the Georgia Southern man. This is Jarek McKinnon. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. A good gain of 14 there, and it moves the chains. Well, no slow start here. A couple nice chunk plays back-to-back. -back. I love the momentum that they're showing here early because they did it both ways, right? Threw the ball on first down for a nice chunk of yardage. Came right back and ran the ball. Looks like they've got the defense set back on their heels. Let's see if they can keep this moving. Stepping up, he's going to keep it. No gain there as he kept it himself at second down. fresh set of downs. Well, I think that's what they're going to need to do here in the first half. You've got to take some pressure off of this young quarterback, and no better way to do it than to establish the running game early. hitter inside but that one was swallowed up because what they're hoping those big defensive linemen will take the bait and move laterally and open up a crease that they can run through didn't happen on that play Second down, Graves. Over the middle, he's got his tight end, Ingram. First catch for him. It's good for a dozen and a first down. I do believe we'll see a little bit more of this as this game progresses because when you can have that type of a gain in the middle of the defense, it hurts them in so many ways because 
most teams like to be strong down the middle. And if you can sting them there, that opens things up for you on the outside as well. But that's where he, their big tight end, is so good. That middle third, the seam routes, the in routes. Yeah, you're right. Probably see more of that. Yeah, it takes a lot of courage and fortitude to go in the middle as well. <laughs> and he's got it. Seven yards on the pickup there, and it'll leave him with a second and three. Looking to throw on second down. Graves steps away to his left. And he's got it. His first catch, good for 14 there and a first down. Pretty solid start for the rookie here on this first drive, Charles. Able to have some confidence, step it back into the pocket, move around a little bit, find open receivers, and deliver. That just means his confidence is going to continue to grow because he's getting more and more comfortable with each completed pass. Second and goal. They're right there at the one. No gain, but don't let that stop you. Line back up and keep going at them. If I'm them, I'm thinking about going at it four straight times. And the backfield standing alone on second and goal is McKinnon. going to get it running right. And he'll actually lose a little bit of yardage here. Back to the two. It'll be a loss of a yard, and that is going to set up third and goal. The short field shrinks even more with the type of bodies they brought in on that play. Those extra tight ends, they weren't able to secure their blocks, and that one ended up going backwards. Third down and goal. This Denver defense trying to hold up for one more play. On the toss, it's McKinnon. What a stand so far defensively, and now that's going to bring up a fourth and goal. Oh, Brandon, that was a big play by the defense to keep him out of the end zone on third down, so there's an early decision to be made here, isn't there? I know that three is awfully tempting, but I'd pull on my big boy pants right now, and I'd go for it. A dozen plays on that drive that ends with the field goal. Let's go ahead and break out some of the old chestnuts here, right, partner? Keep the ball in front, rally to it, and make the tackle. Right? No big plays given up. No balls over your head. Bend, don't break. Hold on, hold on. Chestnuts? Uh, you like Come that on, one? what does that mean, break out? The, just because you break chestnuts? I, I'm not sure about that, but I'm just going with why they said that. I have no idea. Stopped here on this first play as he gets it to the line of scrimmage and no more. No gain on the play. It'll be second down. Cousins now on second down. 
He's going to fire this thing deep right sideline. So the long attempt falls innocently to the ground, and it brings up third. Uh, you got a young quarterback, you know, maybe that's just an example of a growing pain for him. I think you're right about that because when the game starts to move fast and it moves quickly on him, a lot of times they fall back on what they know best, their arm. He's, he's slinging it on this one. Had a wide open target, but didn't have the proper footwork to increase his accuracy. Got him in. It's Brown. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. A 10-yard pickup, and it's enough for a Broncos first down. Did you see that route the way that I did? I yep. thought he was trying to get deep Yeah, that first. wasn't the first option. No, not the, it came off of that guy, the deep guy, and came underneath on the drag, completed it very well. A first carry for Samaj P. Ryan. And he'll be brought down, losing yardage back at the 40. That's going to go as a loss of a yard, and it'll be second down. But well, we just saw a great example of what we talked about with his coach prior to the game. He's definitely one of the better linebackers at reading a play and flowing to make the stop before it turns into something big. Let's just do me. Let's just do me. Black, black. Flipper, flipper. Black, black. Second down, Cousins. He finds Ross, right side, it's complete. And he's taken down, but not before he gets this into enemy territory across the 40. 23 yards on the play. I always laugh when people say, what's the toughest route to defend? And I'm like, any of them, especially if it's a good receiver, that makes things very difficult. But when you're running a drag route, something short, shallow, going through defenders, using guys almost as, as screens in order to get open, that makes things tougher, guys trying to get to the football. Back-to-back -back nice plays, 12 yards that time and a first down. Running game working, they'll stick with it on first down. And not much of a hole there as he gets it down to about the 24-yard line. Brought down that time by Christian Kirksey. One thing to keep in mind, partner, especially in the second half, when you've got a running back of this size, of these dimensions, I can just tell you, attrition does set in for a defense because you're excited about hitting him in the first half. Maybe not so much in the second half, and some of these shorter gains turn into bigger runs later. Now a second down throw for Cousins. Nowhere to escape, and he goes down. Bruce Irvin in there to make the sack. He buries him for a loss of 10. Cousins with work to do after the sack as he brings his guys up on a third and long. Working out of the gun, Cousins, and Blake has it over the middle. Now the Bears electing to call a timeout defensively. They'll have two remaining as we step aside here in this second quarter. And Santos able to put this one up and through. It's good, and that will tie us at 3-3. So matching field goals on our opening two drives. Yeah, it feels like two boxers feeling each other out here in the early going of the game, right? Exchanging some jabs, but none of the heavy stuff just yet. J.J. Nelson now a return. And yeah, not a bad return here. He gets it out to the 25-yard line. The Bears offense now heading back out onto the field. And last time they got three points, but it was a chip shot field goal. And when you go to the sideline after a chip shot field goal, maybe the offense not too happy. It's a balancing act, isn't it? Because you're exactly right. They're none too pleased that they didn't punch it in for six points. But they also have to remember, they did put points on yeah, the board. Three points is three points. And in this league, <laughs> you take points when you can get them. Not easily done. And he'll be taken down after a short gain as that takes us to the two-minute warning. Two minutes to play in a tightly contested first half. Back to Denver right after this.
They'll run it now out of the gun. And he'll fight forward to about the 27-yard line. Jalen Smith, the Notre Dame man, in on the tackle. You mentioned very early on the need to establish a running game for this young QB. They really haven't been able to do that, though, in the first half. So that means what in halftime? Adjustments, Adjustments time, right? Figure out what they are. Figure out the things that they really want to accomplish and who to run behind. Which are your better blockers? Find those guys and get in that direction. Third down, Graves. He finds his target, Fuller. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. Ohio. That one good Ohio. for 16, Ohio. and the drive will continue. I think it all came together there. In-breaking route, drove it with excellent pace. Money throw right there. He'll be brought down by the Broncos. It's a sack. Eli Harold. Able to get in there and drop him for a two-yard loss. Now, following the sack, they'll come up here on a second down and 12. From the gun, Graves. Calling it in, Nelson. And he'll be brought down at the 48-yard line. They get 11 back on that one. It leads to third down. Fired that one in there, able to make connection on a nice in route. With those faster passes and they're going that fast, any hesitation as a quarterback that the deflection, if you miss, might be bigger and lead to an interception? Yeah, and the deflection works both ways. Maybe a defender gets a hand in the way and it pops in the air. And sometimes you throw it so hard your receiver can't handle it, and he pops it up in the air for the defenders to grab as well. But a moot point there is they were able to connect. And no move to get the offense off the field. They'll stay put on fourth and one. Operating from the gun, Graves. He's going to have his running back. It's complete. And now before this first down play, we're going to get a timeout here. As the clock will stop with 20 seconds to go in the first half. Flex round! Flex round! They'll run it now out of the gun. And he'll be taken down at the 34. The tackle was by the Boston College product, Harold Landry. Off the play fake, Graves. He's letting this one go for Fuller. And this is incomplete with a clock showing just three seconds left. Will Fuller was the intended target, and it's third down. So three seconds here remain in the half. On is the field goal unit to see about getting three points. On the left hash, officially it's called a 51-yard attempt. So if you like... And just like that, on we head to half number two. Thank you, sir. A field goal separates these two teams as we come back for this second half. This is taken at his four. And a good return as he'll be stopped just shy of the 30-yard line. Here comes the Broncos offensive unit here as they'll have it first to begin this third quarter. They're close, close game, but they're going to need to do a little bit better probably here in half two, no? I would agree with that totally. I would guess it in the locker room. They talked about cleaning up some of the errors, but overall I think they wanted to be positive with them. Guys, we're right there. Just not playing as well as we need to. Let's pick it up. And we still have a chance to win this game. Yeah, they do. We'll see if they can pick it up. And Dominican Sue makes the tackle. I call that play a success. A nice inside run sets up a very manageable second down, a very solid gain on that play. Let's go, let's go. Gun. Hey, Ringo, 48. Hey, 50. They'll run again with Piron, and he'll get it out near the 40 to the 39. Seven yards there, good enough to move the sticks. Boy, he does it at a high level, doesn't he? Because when I watch him, I think of his vision. Straight ahead, peripheral. Also has that sense of where holes are going to be before they actually open. I think that helps set him apart from many of the other bats in the league. Steps away. And his throw is incomplete. Akeem Tlaib, the veteran pro bowler, there to get a hand in, knock it away. And that's one he's got to be happy to have back. There wasn't a hole open in the zone. You'd have to think on early downs like that first down there, need to be a little bit more careful. Yeah, fortunately for him, got a couple more downs to play with. The hard yellow, yellow, yellow. Black, black, 82. You're not ready. You're not ready. Hey, we're good. 
good, we're good, we're good. They'll run it now, out of the gun. And getting this chest shy of midfield, they'll spot it at the 49. A 10-yard pickup, and it's enough for a Broncos first down. That was good, tough running right up the middle. And if the defense can't penetrate and make him slow his pace or change direction, that's often the end result. Right back to him on first down. And he's got it across midfield and into Bear territory. It's a pickup of four, and it'll bring up second down. Tough running there. That's a hard earn four yards. Yeah, those are the unsung kind of runs. They don't fill up the stat sheet, but they do set you up in good position on second down. They'll run it now out of the gun. And the reinforcements come in as they're going to stop him behind the line. So he loses three yards there. Now third down. Brandon, we're into the second half, and this offense has not scored a lot of points, and that was another example of why. I think it's time to open things up and start really trying to move the ball. Cousins now from the 50. Got a man, it's Ross, complete. And he's going to get the first down as he covers up after a pretty good shot there. Give him 14 yards there and a Denver first down. First down, here's Cousins. And this is caught at the eight. And down he goes, taking it inside the 10 to the seven. He got 29 yards that time. Might we see our first touchdown of the game? Here's first and goal. They'll run it now out of the gun. And he is met at the line of scrimmage, and he goes down right there. They'll say no gain on the play, and it'll be second and goal. They'll try again here from the seven on second and goal. He'll get it up the middle. And he is into the end zone for a Denver touchdown. Zach Line, his first touchdown of the new season. And the Broncos are in for six. Well, it was second and goal. You're in there close. That's the fullback's comfort zone. Not only is it his comfort zone, it's an expectation. That's what he's supposed to do. Turn and hand it to him. Big guys fire out. Find your way into the end zone. So here are the Bears now as they get set for their first possession of the second half. They're down in this game. A chance for the offense, though, to put something on the board, get some momentum here at half two. Try and get things kick-started for them. And you know at the half, they discussed how they were going to get that done. This is where scripting comes into play a lot how, of the how time. How many plays do you script coming out of the second most half? Of, most of the time in the first half, you're scripting 12 to 16. I think in the second half, you're really scripting more like 8 to 10. Kind of a starter or an opener, whatever they whatever terminology they use. Just something to get you off to. And he's going to have to eat this one as down he goes. Muhammad Wilkerson. In there to sack him for a loss of six. Work to be done here on second and 16 after the sack. From the gun, Graves buying time to his left. Caught by Nelson left side. And they're able to get this one across the 35. He goes for 18 there as the drive will continue. As a general rule, offensive linemen like to know where their quarterback's going to be when he's setting up to throw the football. But sometimes they just have to get on the run, get on the move. He was able to do that on that play and picks up a first down with a nice throw. Looking to throw. Great. And it pops free. The collision there jarred the ball loose and brings up second down. We saw this a lot in the first half, and it continues. These receivers just not able to get much separation. So that means they have to win the 50-50 balls. They've got to go up with the defender and find a way to start coming down with them. And this time, contact and another incomplete pass. Back 
to the air on second down. Graves. Caught left side, Williams. And he'll be taken down across the 50 at the 45 in enemy territory. He got 18 yards out of that one, and it gets him a new set of downs. On first and 10, Graves throwing the out route incomplete. It's Nelson. And here he'll be brought down a little shy of the 35 at the 36. Given nine there on the first down completion. To throw on second down, Graves. And the hit jarred it loose. It's incomplete. We've seen good cover skills on display throughout this game, really from both teams. And there's another nice example there of them making it difficult to complete a pass. They'll run it now out of the gun. And an alley to run. And he'll be brought down on what's going to turn out to be the final play of this third quarter. Throwing on first down. Graves throwing the out route incomplete. It's Nelson. And he's brought down. Give him 11 yards that time and a new set of downs. But it appears that they read man defense and went to the out route. And what you have to do on that one is the receiver's got to make sure he works the defender towards the middle of the field to give himself space to cut to the outside and have that ball delivered with good timing. And they got it done. A gain of three, second down. And that's one of the reasons you like to blitz even on rundowns. It confuses the blocking assignments. It doesn't allow those offensive linemen to get up to the second level. They run once more with McKinnon. And he goes backwards here, losing yardage back to the 16. Big play coming up. Here's third and 10. I would expect to see some pressure here. And the blitz does come. Dancing to his left. He may try and run for this. And they'll bring him down at the 13-yard line. The decision to tuck and run gets him three, but that's not enough. Now it's fourth. And, partner, I would guess that in his headset he was hearing from his coach, it's third down, don't take a sack. And in this case, he's able to avoid the pressure and get out of there. He doesn't get the first down, but he does turn a possible loss into positive yardage. So with that field goal, this one's now back within a field goal. Maybe not the ultimate result they wanted, but gets them that much closer. This game is unfolding like a really good book, isn't it? Because I feel like there's a few more plot twists yet to be revealed before this one is over. We saw a number of good games earlier today. This one might top all of those. It's been a dandy as we come up on first and ten. It's P. Ryan to begin the drive, and he'll get this one up to the 26. Just a yard on the pickup there, and it'll bring up a second and nine. Well, Brandon Pace comes into play now because they've got the advantage. They've got the football, but they've got to be very careful about what speed they're going to play. You know, my, my music teacher back in New Paltz, Mrs. Bifema Bagley, used to say, don't go prestissimo when you really want to go Largo. And what she meant by that. And look at this. They get the turnover they needed. It's intercepted. Picked off at the 40. And they will set up shop in enemy territory at the 42-yard line. this guy has to be a priority before moving up to the next level because the big fella he just ate that one alive just stuffed it in fact before the game he was talking to us and he's like hey these pants make me look fat and we said nah man you're just a whole lot of guy he is at well over 300 pounds he's a big man oh he's got a man wide open complete 15 yards there for number 15 Tell you what, he's been able to put the ball in some tight spots all game long. That throw, no different. Yeah, a lot of people would call it a gutsy type of a throw. I think he looks at it as, I can do it, so it's not that big of a deal to me. I'm going to keep firing. And he'll lose yardage here, going down back at the 28. It's a loss of a yard there, and now second down. It's real easy to say this running game needs to be better, but the reality is they've been given little time to actually find a place to run the football. It's almost like the defense is there on the handoff. Caught by Nelson. 
And he'll be brought down inside the 20 at the 19. They'll get nine there as that sets him up better for third down. One thing I can say pretty safely, that route is not called if you don't have a guy who can throw the ball and put some mustard on it. Because if you're going to lollipop it in the middle of the field, bad things usually happen. It takes a strong-armed guy who can rifle it in there, and they were able to successfully complete that one. This is third and two. Maybe the biggest play in this football game. They'll run it now out of the gun. And he picks up the first down yardage as he takes it down to the 16. They only get two there, but on third and one, that's all they needed to keep the drive going. Ohio, Ohio. Ah. Running game working. They'll stick with it on first down. And effective running here. He'll take it down inside the 10. Just what you want on a first down run. Call it eight yards, and it's second and two. They'll run it now, out of the gun. Looking to find a lane, but he can't rein in at the line of scrimmage. Now the Broncos are going to take a timeout. It's just their first. They've got two more to use here in the final stages. The Bears on third down. They've hit at 50%, three of six to this point. They need just a yard here. It's third and one. McKinnon. He takes it across for the touchdown, and they've taken the lead late in the final minute of the fourth. Wow. Wow. Heck of a start to his season. He had two touchdowns in the opener last week. Another one here in week two. Well, I don't want to call him a touchdown machine this early, but sometimes you get locked in, you know, and you feel good about oh, things. You get into that oh, zone, and those touchdowns come in bunches. He may be off to that kind of a start. It's like he was shot out of a cannon. I would imagine success this early, great momentum going forward for the rest of the year. He keeps this up. They'll soon be chanting MVP anytime <laughs> he touches the ball. Here's Prater now set to kick it away. And they will not get a chance to return this one as it's through the end zone for a touchback. Here's the Denver offense now as they get set to take over here. One possession game, <laughs> time very much a factor. How does the offense handle this situation? Well, in a lot of cases, they should be somewhat relaxed. And I know that's counterintuitive because this is a pressure situation. But this is Friday practice every week of the season. You go over this situation, having to go downfield, limited timeouts, got to get out of bounds and keep the drive going and set yourself up. Defensively, you can't just lay back and let them do it. Over. And he can't get a throw away. He's taken down. Now before the second down play, we'll get whistles and a timeout as they'll stop the clock with 24 seconds to go in the game. Go, well, they're right. in some hot water now after that sack. Two, it's two, second two. and 21. They'll look to throw. He's going to let it fly. And he can't corral it. That would have wrapped it up if he'd been able to hold on. Instead, it brings up third down. Tried to go for the big one there on second down. Now they're likely down to their final two plays. And you know they've got to keep going for the big shot, right? So defensively, you play what they call top down. Nothing behind you. Make everything get completed in front. Back to throw. And he can't get a throw off. He's taken down. What a huge play at this point in the game. Now, before they run this fourth down play, we're going to get a timeout. As he'll stop it with 11 seconds remaining in the ball game. And down by five. They've got to go for it here on fourth down. He'll look to throw. Now a desperation throw deep downfield. And that is incomplete. Stopping the clock 
with five seconds to go. They had to go for it with such little time remaining. And that's going to be just about all she wrote for this one. It's first and goal and a late touchdown at this stage. Could officially salt this one away. Looks like he'll throw here. And he's across for the late touchdown. And in the final seconds, that one should just about put a camper on this game. So a little icing on the cake there before the clock gets all zeros. What a way to finish things off. Exactly what you want. Not much time and a touchdown to put things away. Extra point good by Prater. And the decision to just kick the extra point winds up successful. Short, short kick. One of the up middle take it now. 